Welcome to Beacons of Balance. I'm Arlene and this is Linda. And um, we're here and so happy and grateful that you're here to share this with us. And for all of those that are like the first timers that are just tuning in, what Beacons of Balance is, it, um, we're here to share to share with everyone kind of like what our purpose is here on this chaotic planet and to balance it out because we're all beings. We have darkness and we have light. And it's always a, a thing about choice to balance it. Um, so we'll talk about each month um, different topics. So kind of what we've been doing thus far is we have themes that we're talking about and we'll run it through for the whole month on different topics and that. And this is the month, it's my favorite month. It's the month I got married. <laughs> it's the month of love, February. So we're looking this month, we're looking at relationships and all various relationships. So it's uh, family, friendships, acquaintances, and romantic. We're very excited because the last one on romance, we have a doctor who's going to be a guest speaker. and That'll be the last week of uh, February, the last Wednesday. These come out every Wednesday. So a relationship takes two or more people, right? Because you have to connect. You're connected. And it's how they behave towards each other. How do you behave with each other? And the main components of any relationship, be it a family, friend, acquaintance, or romantic is primary is honesty, trust, compromise, respect, and communication. Things to be aware of, red flags. Red flags, being overly controlling, lack of trust, feeling low self-esteem, physical, emotional, mental abuse, substance abuse, narcissism, anger, issues, codependency. Inability to resolve conflict, constant jealousy, gaslighting, made to feel guilty, unwilling to communicate. Yeah, these are all things to be aware of. Um, and we could all reflect in our own relationships if these are our key things to um, look at to see if you have one of those components going on. Um, how healthy is it for you? Right. And also, you have to look at yourself because. We tend to think this relationship will, will make me this or help me with this or be my calling. And that's not how it works. You have to be strong within yourself. You cannot look to someone else to make you whole. You have to be whole. That was the hard part in my life is that I was never whole. So I always had misguided relationships. And that comes into when we first come in, a message that I got because I write to you know, I call them the angels, you call them the realm, whatever, you know, we, to a higher power, when you really get yourself quiet and you sit with a journal and that. And so I've done this for years and I had a really profound message that came in and they said, where we start with, when we come into this life, we start with whoever's raising us, our parental guidance, whoever it could be, right? That's our foundation. So we come in all with this beautiful, they described as a beautiful white light veil. And then what happens so you start getting raised by whomever and you look to them, right? And all of a sudden you get holes punched in this veil. You, there, there's where your wounds are. Oof, oof, oof. Yeah. And then as we get older and as we grow, we start filling those holes. We right. look, Like you were saying, we look to the outside to try to fill the hole to make us whole. <laughs> like if your parents weren't very healthy emotionally, you'll want to fill that with something that's unhealthy again, because that's what you know. And I think there, it's dysfunction. No one's yeah. all Ozzy and Harriet. I don't care. I know people that grew up in Ozzy and Harriet, and guess what? They have more problems and more issues. Well, so. you know, physical violence was very common in those days. The man was the king. and Certain rules that you followed and everything. I mean, that's how I thought when I grew up, right? You think, okay, I'm going to work to this point in time, and I'm either going to get married, whatever. And I'm going to retire at this stage. That's that's not it. That's not how it runs. But we were, we were programmed that way. And yeah. I think for us, it's difficult, or it took us, I think, longer to break those programs. So yeah. hopefully the, the younger generation now have all these tools that we <laughs> we learn exactly. by to give, to give them that it makes it easier, hopefully that way. So this first one we're going to cover is um, family relationship. Positive family re relationships, really you help family members solve problems. You work as a team and enjoy each other's company. 
<laughs> I mean, how true is that for all families? <laughs> right. But, right. Yeah. Um, they are built on quality time and communication, teamwork and appreciation. And that then was, uh, respect for different. Different options. Opinions. Opinions. opinions yeah. Take an interest in each other's lives. Make time to go to sporting events, drama performance. Yeah, talk but, about these yeah. events. Yeah. And then share uh, family stories and memories. Acknowledge each other's differences. Yeah, talents and abilities. So these are things when you build a relationship in a family unit where healthy things to do. The the you know, the red flags that you mentioned, I mean, those are things that cross over in all of the relationships we'll be talking about. And there's just about. some families that aren't healthy, period. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you get them front row Super Bowl seats. They just never appreciate anything. Because, as you said, where does that come from? Where does it stem from? It comes from the Their self. parents. Yeah, and it comes from the self and yeah. stuff that they haven't looked at and everything, so they don't know how to get out of it. So the whole topic, because, you know, we're about beacons about how do you balance this out? No expectations. Yeah, that's the big, that's a big thing in life, period. I have a hard time with that one. Yeah. I still fall into it. I mean, you know, we're human, you know? I mean, it's like people think, why didn't that family member do this for me? I can't believe I was there when they needed it and then they're not there for me. It, it, expectations. You got to go with flow. And then a lot of issues come up around money. Oh. Right? Oh. Uh, if, you know, or if one has more than the other. And then the jealousy factor sets in. I didn't have that happen, but I have read people. I've had clients that had horrible. And then some parents will be so cruel. They'll leave everything to one child and not the others or make a child that's known to be a crook. The uh, the one that oversees everything. Of course, if the person rips everyone off. You know, what do you do with all of that? Well, you can't depend on money. You can't make money the whole issue. Right. Well, I'm, I'm using that. Yeah. Like one example. But that's I think in relationships, all kind of relationships, you know, that that plays into it. Finance, because if somebody feels like they're working harder and contributing, we'll say like in a, a, a romantic romantic or partnership relationship and the other person isn't eventually you start resenting that person. You know, unless you have a good balance of it somehow, you know, so we all have to like analyze this. And like you said, a lot of times, uh, you know, I always saw a, a certain picture in my mind of my family, what I wanted it to be or whatever, my mother and father. And, the, you know, and back, it's just like when all the TV started, and you saw those nice, like, leave it to beaver, all that. <laughs> This isn't my family. This doesn't look anything like that. No, no. Thought, What's wrong? Oh, with this? my dad was strict like Ward, but yeah. they just put out the part where he'd smack you across the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was the generation we lived with. That even in I don't know schooling, what kind of school you went to. I mean, I went to because I was raised very Catholic, so it was parochial school. So we had the old. Oh my God, I went to uh, my lineage is Czechoslovakian part of it. So I went to the ones with the nuns, the full habit. My mother had them. I mean, these people were old. <laughs> when you talk old, they were right. like skeletons with a robe on. And oh my God, they would throw keys at you. They had that bell that did, 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 did. and if the class wasn't quiet, they would take it up and throw it at you and everything. So there was stuff that went on there, you know, you, you were yeah. punished. But back then, if you went home and you told your parents you were punished for something, you were even punished more. <laughs> yeah. Cause my dad always believed the teachers were right. Okay. This is where the scale goes again. So we were here, which was crazy, but now it's gone completely opposite way where teachers can't even, you know, hug. I, my daughter had gone for social work, you know, and I remember when she started her first position at a home, you know, where kids were fostered and everything. And they would come up to her and she said, you know, we can't, I can't touch them. And I'm like, oh my God, that's horrible. That's terrible. But, you know, and especially from us coming from a medical background, we're used to giving and touching and, you know. Well, you know, they did that study of all those Russian orphan babies. Oh yeah. And they just left them in their cribs and they all had psychological issues with rocking. And it was so yeah. sad. Wear the hair on the back of their head off. We need we need the nurturing. We need the, the hugs. Everybody, you know, the, the key in this life, everybody, what is, what's the big key? Everybody wants to matter. You but know? if you think as man thinks, 
you're talking about even as children we want to be accepted by our peers you know we want to some people just have a natural show business art people are drawn to them some just don't and so it that that foundation with the family actually caring how was your day you know how are you doing and and listening when you say something oh my god did you ever get that i never got how was your day? I mean, we were my never- parents, believe it or not, even though my dad could be so cruel, they actually wanted to know how we how we did. Really? How we did. Yeah, that was that was big. I'll tell you something about my parents, even though my dad wasn't that great with my mom. When they were together in their older age, they would talk to each other like they just met each other. Totally engaged and and happy and it, it was the weirdest thing the dichotomy was so weird because they did love us but they were also I think my mom was resentful she had three kids back to back and then she got rheumatoid arthritis sometimes I wonder um the way my mother was with this I always thought I don't think she really wanted to have kids I'll tell you Mom, you know, right there again, that, go, that goes to the role people play. You thought right. you got to, you know, you're this age, you had to get married back then and you yeah. had kids. And I don't, I don't think she really wanted to have kids. I'm telling you, mom did not like saying this, but she one day said, if I hadn't had you kids, my life would be so much better. As a child, you remember that statement. Of course you do. And when we reminded her of it, she totally denied. Listen, my mom could drop a plate and break it in her, in the kitchen by herself and would blame it on us. And, you know, my mom was an orphan at age 12, and there was really a lot of sadness with her because she didn't have that nurturing mom. Her dad just was an alcoholic, and after the the mom died, he sent them all away to a a boarding school, St. Patrick's Catholic, uh, to be raised by mean nuns, according to my mom. They were mean. (laughs) I could could testify. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's true. You know, my mother was kind of a parallel her father died when she was two. Oh yes and her mother never remarried or anything so she was left with three kids she was the second wife because his first wife my grandfather which i never knew my grandparents because they were old but his first wife passed away died and he had three kids from that marriage and he had so, to marry someone else to take care of these kids so my grandmother came over from europe and she was you know, whatever housekeeper and stuff. So they met, I don't know, but anyways, so they got married and then they, you know, she had three kids, but my mother, his oldest daughter from the first marriage was close in age with my grandmother, but that's how it was back then. You know what I mean? So they were both pregnant, like at the same time. So I had, I used to call this one member of my family, my aunt, I loved her, my aunt Helen. She was, she was really my cousin. (laughs) She was my mother. She was my mother's niece, and my mother was her aunt. But they were, they were the same age practically, a few years different. You know, it's cra- crazy times. But, you know, touching on this because it's all about family. One thing back then we had, even though it was the crazies and stuff, maybe because people didn't drive as you know, they only had maybe one car, maybe you didn't have a car at all. So it made the family units were like were together. And mom cooked a meal every day. It, we always sat down for dinner. You didn't go out to eat. Although dad was happy to take us out to eat. But most of the time we had we sat down at the dinner table. And nowadays, it's we're living, I feel we're living right now in a fractured society. I think we're so fractured all the way around. How do you feel? Yeah, but but we can if we can heal ourselves, we heal the world. Oh, definitely. So that connection with the realm, like I like to talk about the Tao via Edgar Cayce and Wayne Dyer, that connection to source is the most important thing you can have. Like I tell people that are somebody wrote me, I'm 50 now and I'm so miserable. I said, so listen to what you're saying to me. You're announcing to universe who you are and they're giving you more of the same. What, like we say, what you feed breeds, what you focus on grows. And like I say with money too, if you keep thinking you've got no money, guess what? More of the same. Exactly. More of the same. So exactly. you have to change the way you think and it's hard to do. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm on the same page with you, but I'm just saying as an observation of the world, 
you know, a lot of people aren't aware. And the children are so important and we can get tired. I know I got tired. Hey, listen, the minute my two little boys could push a chair up against the stove in their diapers and make their own top ramen, my job was done. I, you know, uh, but you're exhausted, you know, plus I had those babies later in life, but that love and attention, my kids loved me to pay attention to them, listen to them when they're talking. That's huge. Everybody wants that there. Again, you want to matter. You want to matter. You want to matter. And most of the time, and when relationships start failing in any, any aspect of any type of relationships, that's what happens. So you get so right. focused on, on you yourself and what's going on and you don't pay attention. to some, some Well, I've been married three times and I do not blame. In fact, in my book, I don't mention the names of any of my husband's ex-husbands because I was so sick. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't love myself. I was bouncing off the walls. So how could I expect to get a solid, good relationship when I didn't have a good relationship? I kept thinking the other person was going to save me. And that wasn't their responsibility. So I, I go forward with no anger like I used to have. Girlfriend, I used to be pissed. But now it's like, whatever, I'm done. I don't, they have no more power over me. I can't complain anymore. Well, this is where, again, so we'll go back to the, this is where the balance comes in. We have to do it. First, for self. So, any healthy relationship in any aspect, what we want has to start here. We have to start. And it does exist. I've talked to so many people that have the most wonderful relationships, beautiful relationships. So, it can happen. Look at you and your husband. Oh, yeah. Well, it took work. (laughs) You you hit some pay dirt. I manifested him. I manifested yeah. him. I really did. I, I focused and I, it was work. Yeah, nothing's 100%, but we were just talking about last night. You know, we laugh. I mean, if you could laugh, you laugh in the morning. We get some days in the morning. I'm not a morning person. So he's he's like, hello, good morning. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> well, I have thyroid issues. So, you know, thyroid, you're like the engine's slow. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it takes me to like noontime to rev up a little bit, you know? You have coffee in the morning? No. Okay. No, I'm a big water drinker now. I was never really a coffee drinker. I love my, I only can have one cup of coffee. Yeah. Just one cup. And listen, if I go in for some outpatient thing where they want me NPO, don't drink anything. I will have such a headache over that one cup of coffee. So, you know, a thing like we mentioned, all these, you know, the red flags are things just to be aware of if you're around that. Um, you need to, and like you were talking about any relationship to be healthy, you know, it could be a family, you know, family relationship, friendship, whatever. But if people aren't on, like you're saying the level, like you were saying, I I had been in addictive relation, you know, yeah. addicts, addicts. And, you know, of course I'd gone for therapy and stuff. And I, you know, I said to the therapist, I said, listen, I said, usually you go to therapy, you try to start again on even keel ground. But I said, this person is like out here, out here, and I'm not there. So how the heck could you even start? You know what I'm saying? I know. Because they're, you know. And honesty, honesty with yourself and the other person. If if you say your truth and the other person can't handle the truth, well, adios, don't let the door hit you on the way out. A lot of people can't do that. Or a lot of people can't even, um, you know, since we're talking about in this episode about family uh, relationships. And as you said, there's a lot of sick. I think every family, we have every aspect of everything that's out there in, in the family unit, be it addictions, incest, all painted the whole picture, successes, failures, everything. It's all within our nucleus there. But that damage when you're young. And that damn, yes. Yeah. Yes. So the thing is, I mean, if there's people like that, you know, you have to, yes, you have to distance yourself from it. You know, those red flags. And heal yourself. And part of the healing is forgiving. And a lot of people have a hard time. I'll never forget that SOB. And I'm like, you know what? As long as you carry that, that person still has power over you. Don't give them any more power. You don't have to forget. Mm -hmm. but you need to walk away. Yeah. And even when we do do the forgiveness part and we, you know, heal that for us, as we go on through our, our life, there will be things that trigger a memory of stuff that triggers that to come back up. But the thing is, 
that will happen. You, you can't think that's going to be erased away. But what happens when it comes up, you just let it slide by. You don't you don't stay in it and etch that record over and start playing it all over again and over again and over again, you know? Yeah. You let it go. But like you said, the yeah, forgiveness is really important and the anger. I always say with, with the anger and that's like drinking poison and wishing the other person dead. You know, you're really, you know, and that you can't, you can't achieve the balance if you can't do the forgiveness thing. It's a very important factor. They're just, when I write also, you know, they say, it's really so simple here, but we make it so complicated. Well, it's also getting out of your own way. Don't overthink, stand in the realm, be quiet and allow, and, and think in the way of joy and happiness. And you'll be surprised how things will change for you. If you could wake up every day and smile, even if you have to force yourself, you know, yes. as they say, fake it till you make it, smile and hug, you know, I've hugged myself. Hug we're not saying we're not saying it's it's sunshine lollipops. Oh. We're tell I'm telling you, we're here on earth for lessons. We're not here, you know. Some people can get away with stuff, but we're here to be whole. And 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 those lessons bring us closer to the realm. And the more you can be non-engaged with nonsense and understand, because I just hit, I'll tell you later, I just had some drama. Uh, about an insurance thing. And um, I went to get that old Linda USOBs. Well, let me call the news media. Let me get on. <laughs> that was the old Linda. Yeah. Just you, call back like, you know what? It's going to work out. I'm not going there. So I, after our show, I have to sit down and write. Yeah. To yeah. The president of the United States. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's true. You know, I was going through an insurance thing with an injury at work and I had called up. It was, and it was about some monies that were owed. Right. So I called up and the person, Oh no, you, you're not getting that because it had to be, you know, period of time. I forget. So of course I'm on the phone. I'm going, Ugh. I'm, I'm like, and all of a sudden I took a deep breath and I, and I was very nice to the person. I said, you know what? I said, okay, I appreciate your help. And you know, I could have to understand this better. And thank you. And I thanked her. Even though, and I hung up the phone. Guess what? What? Five minutes later, the phone rang and she said, you're getting it. She was probably so used to abuse. I couldn't get one of my sons into a doctor uh, as his primary doctor. He was my primary doctor. And the lady at the counter said, yeah, he's totally full. And I said, yeah, I understand. And then somebody came in and was very mean to her. And I went up to her later. I said, you know, the way you handled that, you were such a professional. I was very impressed. And I go to walk away. She said, ma'am. I said, yes. She said, your son's in now. You just, if you'd be surprised if you can just be kind. You could, we each are so powerful. We each have everything inside of us and you could just switch it. And, you know, as we say at the end, be the change you want to see. It's, you know, treat yeah. people the way you would want to be treated. And, you know, a lot of times we don't know a person could be in a nasty place or whatever, but we don't know what they're going through. No. You know, somebody could have, I remember when I had my um, angel shop and I had a cafe, you know, and I used to make cappuccino, you know, someone came in for a cappuccino and she goes, I want it, you know, and you know how people are, they want five different things. I want it this way and I want this and I want these, I'm doing it. You know, because I'm, you know, I'm doing it. I made it. I put it back. And she goes, oh, no, it's da, da, da. So I took it back. And, da, 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 da. and she, <laughs> she was, she complained. She kept complaining. So I just looked at her. I said, excuse me. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, my mother just passed away, which was true. I just got in the call. My mother died. You know what I <laughs> want to do with that coffee? Of course I didn't. But I just, you know, and then What'd she, she say after that. Oh, she was really, she was kind of mortified. It, okay. it, it pulled her back to think like, oh, my God. Like really? a human. Yeah. 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 But it, it happens to um, all of us. You know, a lot of times, and I think for guys, it's a bigger thing of road rage, you know. Um, I always tell my husband, I said, Jesus, when he drives, I said, you're either Mario Andretti, like pushing people or else he's Mr. Magoo. You know, he's like, uh, look like looking at everything going yeah. two miles an hour. There's no in between. Or when we're going, he's like on somebody's rear end. And I'm like, stop it. You know, stop yeah. it. Or if somebody's on his rear and I said, just move over and let them go by. I said, yeah. we don't know. I said, just let's assume that they're going to an emergency. You know, maybe not, but, you know, just assume that and then just let them go. And bless it. You know, I just saw a video where 
this guy was driving and, and there was another car going and this guy went to go around him. And then he backed up a little because he was going to hit oncoming traffic. So I think the guy was mad that the guy didn't let him in sooner. So as soon as he got in front of the guy, the guy had the camera. But when he slammed the brake, he had a freezer in the back of his car. Oh. It went through the back window. Talk about karma. Oh, my God. That, yeah, when things happen like that. There was a story, of course, you know, when I had my shop, I used to hear all these things. But there was somebody, uh, you know, like you're on the highway and all of a sudden there's a it stops. And you have to be yeah. someplace, and you're, you know, most people are all looking at their watch and they're agitating, they're cursing and everything else. And this one person sat there and said prayers for if someone's up ahead with an accident or whatever. Well, guess what? It was a really bad. Um, I always do that. It was I a really, pray. but they didn't know, but it was a really bad accident. And this, this sounds weird, but I believe it. The person that was in the accident probably was out of their body. You know, as we talk about, right, you leave your body. They always say if you have something horrific that happens to you like that, and I've talked to people, bad accidents and things like that, family members feel like, oh, my God, what did they feel? They had, a, you know, they went through the windshield or whatever. We're, we're, we're lifted out. We're yeah. lifted out right then. But they do yeah. tend to stay at the scene initially. Yeah, but we're lifted out. We When we feel the pain is when, we, when they shove us back in. <laughs> we're recovering. That's when we get the pain. Right. Anyways, at this particular incident, when this person in the car was praying and sending out good light and, and to whatever happened, the person that was able, they saw, and they saw the light. They found the person afterwards, and they thanked them. Wow. So the person knew this person's praying for me? Yeah, they didn't know each other, but the person that was injured was out of your body and floating. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you're aware, you're hovering. And saw, because, you know, as they talk about, like you're in surgery and the person could be out and they know what the doctor and the nurses were talking about. Yeah. Hey, listen, are we going to do a show on prayers? Oh, yeah. Because we could do a prayer session every once in a while. And I have gotten so much feedback. Let's share our story. So many miracles. I have a lot of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just write that down. Don't forget prayers. You write it, write it down so we could. I got it it down. So this episode, again, was going back to family relationships. And it's just to be aware of what's going on in your own particular family. And these little pearls that we're sharing and these things that we read off, you know, this is, you know, I've done research and extrapolated the information from, you know, doctor, different sources. So it's just to share it with everybody. And they're really, they're important. They're important reminders for us. Well, and also if you can get as best as you can to step out of that energy, because some people thrive off that negative. So if you can forgive them and stand outside and not, it's hard to do. But not go there with them as far as them trying to complain or acting up. You'll find things just happen much easier. You know, as far as family units go on that, if you know, you could be the catalyst. It only takes one person. You could be the catalyst to bring your family members back together. Yes. And to do these things, you know, to share. Um, you know, if there's a lot of strife and anxiety going on about different things, just make it fun. Play a game. Play a stupid game. That just takes your mind out of it. And you just laugh, you know, uh, it's, it's amazing. You know, what happens with it? I remember I went to, it was a new year's Eve kind of party. Of course, everybody was drinking. There were a couple and I brought um, a game over and it was, I don't know, dirty words or dirty sentences. And they were cubes with words on it and you spilled it out and you were timed and you had to make, you had to put the cubes together and make a sentence. But the way the words came, oh my God, they were, and then you had to read them. So oh I read my my, God. So I, yeah, I read some of mine and, and the guys were going, Arlene, read that over again. Because <laughs> I put on a voice. I said, well, I was walking and <laughs> I yeah, came yeah. across this, you know, and it went on and on. it was funny. And then, so then you had to score each other. We had more fun with that. And we laughed. We just laughed. It just took you out of the element of what was going yeah. to happen. Laughter really helps. And, and, I love know. to put on old Laurel and Hardy shows. They make me laugh out loud. So we'll wrap it up. But anyway, um, enjoy your families as much as you can. If you don't have a family, you can make your own family with your friends or, you know, you hook on other people's families. I did. You know, it's funny. Um, you know, when my father passed away, I was only 18. But when I was younger, too, my mother, if she wasn't there for me or whatever, the woman that I, I said that was my aunt, yeah, I called her out, but she was really a cousin. I used to go with her 
you know, as a child, like I knew who to go to for that nurturing part that you needed. Yeah. So go to somebody that you can get that from to fill you. Right. She yeah. was kind. Yeah. Yeah. So that's important too. So what do we end with, Linda? Be the change you want to see. Yes. And from our hearts to yours always in total love, um, our hearts to yours in total love, peace, joy, balance. If you have inner peace, you have it all. This is yeah. the month of love. We love you guys. Thank you for listening, seeing, and if you could please subscribe, pass the word. I know it's spreading out there. People are talking about it. So that's, yeah, that's I just well finally good. figured out how to share it on my, on my YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's gotten there. Yeah. You did the last one, which was good. So yeah, it'll work. I do do prayers. Everyone open to the public. You can write me at Grindle 9103 at gmail.com in the subject, put prayers and I add them all up and then we do a group prayer. It's very powerful. You know, that old saying, when two or more are joined. Gathered in my name. I follow one of my mentors is Greg Braid, and he wrote the Isaiah Effect, and he wrote some other. I love him. He was, he's a, well, people like him. He's a scientist, but he's also spiritual. He's had his own near-death experiences and that. And he's calculated out that energy shifts could happen. Just like a small ratio of people can make a difference in this yeah. world. So what's going on, and I know you do a lot with, politics and a lot of your followers are into the you know it doesn't take a big number of people to make a shift so I know. You focus on what what you want the outcome and everything it will be you just right. have to you let know, it go um, I do have a YouTube channel Linda G at Comanche Psych Linda G Comanche Psychic and I think I'm going on 67,000 followers but I didn't plan this you guys I had this awakening which will be in my book um with cancer and then a man a guide or something talked to me in my right ear and said you're going to do a youtube channel and i was like what i don't want to get up and brush my hair and he said linda you will help calm them down and that was my purpose in doing this i do sometimes see the future i predicted the, the covid i predicted a whole bunch of things but i wanted people to know it's going to we're actually going to be okay that's what I had. 25 is going to be an excellent year. But anyway, so. so we're kind of cut from the same cloth because yeah. when I started Angels, I call it just Angels. Um, it was I called it, it was their place. It wasn't mine. Yes, no, I, I know. The human physical part of it, but it was their energy and it was their place. And they told me, because I used to get strong messages. They said, everyone that walks through that door is going to be changed. I mean, I get chills. Uh, wow. They said because their hearts are being worked down. If they're aware of it or not, they could come in for a cup of coffee or whatever. It doesn't matter. They will leave changed. Something will shift in them. Yeah. You know, first you think it's your own mind when you hear these things. I go, oh, God. Oh, I know. I thought I was going I go, crazy. But I did argue. I said, I said what? Mind. I don't want to get up and brush my hair. And instead of the uh, thunder and lightning hit me, he said, Linda, you will help calm them down. And that's that's what we're here for. We're here to just, you know, if anybody hears one little piece, a nugget, and it's all in each of us, it's just wakening that up. It's just pushing it to wake it up and honor that, you know? Yeah. Anything that you're in, you've created it yourself. Yeah. That might be hard to believe, but you're in it for for a reason, you know? You know, my daughter was sick with COVID and she has lung disease. Yeah, and I was hit hard and I was praying for her. And my guide suddenly stopped me midstream. And he said, why don't you practice what you preach? And I stopped. I say, what do I preach? I preach to give it to the realm and there is no such thing as death. So I actually, in my mind, said, well, Father, if you want her, then then that's the way it should be. I, I in faith, know that everything's going to work out. And I handed it over. I did it peacefully. And that girl rallied like that. The doctor couldn't believe it. Yeah, a lot of times we have to, like you say, hit the wall where you can't, you, know, you think you're doing all this stuff and, you know. Well, it really helps to know, honest to God. And I was raised by atheists. So there is no such thing as death. And what happens is like, I read these people who want me to read for the dead family members and stuff. 
And they, I always say to them, if I could bottle what I'm feeling and hearing from them, the light, the love, you wouldn't mourn for them one more day. They're in paradise. And they don't want us to mourn and cry. No. And, they and you us, know, they like to be remembered, you know, to think yeah, about but they don't, they, 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 they don't often are, are confused. Why are they acting out so much? You know, a lot of people will stop their lives. And I want to share this with you also. Uh, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends, but one of my friends, you know, I would call her, I'd say, oh, Carol, you know, Dick came to me in a dream. You know, they were so, they were like this, that, that was one relationship I looked at. I said, oh my God, it was one of the ones I put up there. Like, wow. Yeah. I don't see anybody like that. And, um, of course she was heartbroken when, and she took really good care of him. He had neurological, he got, he was a chemist and he worked, I think it was from smelling the chemicals and everything. It, 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 you know, triggered that. But I would have dreams about them periodically, and I would call it because I share that. It's, it's important, people out there, that when you hear, you know, share it with with others. If you have a specific dream for someone or whatever, good for them to hear. And she said to me, she goes, why? How come you get it? You know, so a couple of her daughters got up. She said, he doesn't come to me. She's in too and, much mourning. And what you're saying is the mourning, the crying, the you know, sometimes it could be anger. Why did you leave me here and you left me and you're gone? You know, that keeps them at bay. They've told yeah. me about that. It keeps them over here. They don't want to interfere and come close. So I would release that. I was reading a woman that uh, her husband had died and he was talking to me and I'm talking to her. And my phone was on the other end of the room. It was on my dresser on the other side. And while we're talking, we hear this voice. And I said, did you hear that? She said, yes, I did. So I walked down to my to my dresser. I looked at my phone. I did a screenshot of it. It'll be in my book. And it said, in our realm, anything is possible. And I got a screenshot of it. In our realm, anything is possible. And that's what's over there. They get to be totally free of the constraints of men. But they steal that love, just like in the movie Ghost. That love goes with you. But isn't it funny, as we're here in this condition right now, right, as we're sitting here, we, we want to hold on. We don't want to let go of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not scared of it. I know you're not scared of it, but it's just like, no. oh, I don't want to leave, sir. You know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, one day I was driving to Laguna Beach in the 1980s and I got real emotional about when I died that I'd never see my daughter again or my parents. And I'm kind of praying and crying. It's weird how I can mentally go places. And I'm driving and I'm saying, oh, no, uh, if when I die, I'll never see them again. And the man said to me, it probably was that same man. He said, you, he said, you see in your dreams, don't you? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, well, we got we got off a little bit, but this is great. This is what it's all about. So it's all about the energy and it's putting it yeah. out. And, you know, each of you, you matter. You are important. It's a month of love. Love yourself. Go from here, yes. from this brain thing and drop it here into the heart space. Cause that's where it's, that's where it is. That's where it's at. So thank you again for being with us and for joining us from looking, hearing and spread the word, subscribe below. We're out every Wednesday, our new episodes come out. And so we will be the next episode which is going to be on Valentine's Day. Is We hope you guys enjoy it. And be sure to put yeah. comments about, you yeah. know, what you would like even more. Yeah. The next one's going to be on friendships. Um, it's not going to be on romantic love, even though it should be on Valentine's Day. But yeah, because we we we're saving it. Um, it's a doctor's coming on the last Wednesday of this month. Here's my Valentine. <laughs> Gerard Butler. Gerard, Gerard is my Valentine this Gerard. year. <laughs> I'll end it, when is your book coming out, by the way? I, you know what? I didn't realize that um, editing it was going to take so much, but it, it's coming out like weeks. So, okay. We've been waiting. We keep we're you, we're waiting here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. Love All you. right. Bye. Talk to Cheers. you next week.